Welcome back to the channels Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Let us keep the reading of my book Cluters, Mare Pop Beyond the Cloud, available on Amazon. In this part, we will keep the reading of the Chapter 5 MY 15 Years and The Butterfly Effect. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Let's go. But in fact, his question made sense, because much of the situation that brought me closer to Leandro was a consequence of Marcos's presence, even his macho chauvinist, so I would not talk to him after that night. I began to wonder if such manipulation of our behavior would be possible. We stopped researching the subject and got back to us in a timely manner. It was the end of the break time and the end of our brief exercise of setting scenarios of possibilities before our actions. Note, I hope by now you have understood why the chapter has butterfly effect in the title. I finally told my mother that it was okay for Marcos to be invited for my 15th birthday. We were still classmates and friends after all. She nodded with a condescending smile. You could read the balloon of thought above her head. My little girl, so mature. As promised, we have researched I and Marcos on the difficult subject of free will versus determinism. And at the same time, I was also researching how that supposed outside intervention could happen in our minds. When entering the keywords in the search engine appeared a series of religious references, some simple and crude, others complex and improbable. Voices of angels, demons, spirits, ancestors. I can't tell what else. Hard to believe how many nonsense people believe simply because they don't have a logical explanation for something. Also came the references from pop culture and science fiction, voices from the beyond, extraterrestrial messages, ancestors, future communications, alien parasites, mind control, magic, etc. Mixed with these came some interesting references of a more scientific nature that spoke of psychiatric disorders, genetic memory, and of course quantum physics. Note, I warn you that I don't have any psychiatric disorders. That's what Marcos thought about those absences, remember? But neither was it. Almost always when something inexplicable happens in the physical world, one tries to throw the explanation in the quantum world. Strings, parallel dimensions, and alternate flows of time and space are always remembered as the science of multiple possibilities. And science fiction loves to appropriate all of this to create stories that are sometimes fascinating and also sometimes extremely poor and idiots. Just to quote some interesting examples of the use of these theories in fiction, we have the films Contact, Interstellar, and Sphere, all based on books written by scientist writers, despite the dramatic outings often simplistic and appealing to the emotive aspect. I finally bumped into something called neurointernet. It was an interesting neologism conceived by some avant-garde thinkers, physicists, mathematicians, and nerds in general, who assumed that with the accumulation of information in the cybernetic cloud and with the quantum deployments, look, here it is again, of the bitstream, eventually information could break the dimension of space slash time in several different directions, and not just forward, which is the normal flow in our physical world. In addition, the most popular aspect was that in the not-too-distant future there would be a direct connection between the digital world and people's minds, hence the use of the term neuro, nervous or cerebral, in the neologism. After reading a couple of articles and watching some videos of these nerds, I stopped a bit staring at the blank on my computer screen, as if I looked through it and saw nothing more than my thoughts on the subject. For a few seconds, I could catch a glimpse of the possibilities it all represented. It was like a stream of events in a high-speed video. I was right at the center of everything that was happening and I could see that my choices and actions had real and tangible consequences. I decided to take a test. I said to myself, when there is a way to send messages to the past, I'll send one to Leandro, asking him to call me at that moment on that specific date. I spoke and I stared at it, staring at the clock and calendar of the computer. This lasted at least 50 seconds until the phone rang. My heart pounded with anxiety. It was possible that everything was true and I had managed in the future to send a message to Leandro to call me now. I took my cell phone and looked. It was an unknown number. I knew that Leandro was not in my contacts yet because we only talked on the internet. 
I did not want to ask or give the phone and look very interested. But this was old news because as I said before, on the internet we can develop a level of intimacy that you cannot personally achieve. Older people do not understand this. I said, hello. Hi, Mare. I cannot describe my level of frustration when I recognized Marcos's voice on the other end of the line. Oh, hi, Marcos. Wow, what excitement. Did you expect someone else? No. It's, if you want to know, yes. But, was it Leandro? I was surprised by his question. Actually, it was. How did you know? I didn't know. It was just a guess. Before, you were more enthusiastic when you talked to me. Marcos, you don't have to be jealous. I heard him giggling. Where are you? My cell phone couldn't recognize the number. I'm at a friend's house. He came from the city where I lived before coming here. His parents are here to visit some relatives. I'm not sure. He invited me to spend a few days here. Oh, cool. I called you because he was telling me about a new guy who is starting to burst on the internet. It's a YouTuber named Vinny Mayo. He showed me some of his videos here. At first, I found it just funny, as he gets critics and parodies of movies and characters from the pop world. Then I began to notice that he focuses a lot on the same movies and characters as you. So far, so good, right? After all, we are all part of the same cultural world, and we have similar ages and interests. But in his latest videos, he started to tackle a very different theme, relating these pop culture icons with a supposedly struggle against oppression over us young people, that we have to study hard to prepare for an uncertain future. Doesn't it seem like a familiar speech? Oh, my God, Marcos. Does that mean anything other than a curious coincidence? What's his name again? Vinny Mayo. I went to YouTube while I was still talking to Marcos on my cell phone. The boy's channel was already on the main page, as one of the most accessed. Wow, the guy is already a standout. It is, but remember that YouTube presents the highlights according to your browsing history. Then there's an affinity between the themes you search for and what he speaks. Ah, uh, it's true. I will take a look. Thanks. Kiss, bye. I hung up and started watching the videos from the emerging YouTuber. For a few hours, I watched a lot of the boys' short videos. Some really hilarious, others bland, but some penetrated deep into the issue of the lack of perspectives of young people today, with too many requirements in the studies and, at the same time, without presenting a reason for all that sacrifice. After all, if it is to ensure such a future, and at the same time ensure that we can continue to buy the things we like, then there should be more guarantee of working positions. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Continuing to support the channel's Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Subscribe, like, and share the video. Bye bye. <laughs>